Um, just heading out now. Kind of interesting day today. So we got Hannah here today. Joe's out of town right now. So she's filling in. We've been doing a bunch of work on the boat. We did the covering boards, you know, brought them down, redid them all. Go. Of course, when we least expect it, right? So we got Hannah here. We don't have a charter, so we're just kind of pulling a couple of lures. And so one piles on, decides to go to the other side. So now we're chasing him forward. Hannah did a good job clearing every line, and uh, we're getting tight now. She's gonna jump in the chair and fight this thing. Stand by. <laughs> Like a family came from money, it's saying it's funny. If you pay and rent it on a real estate, it's time for you to reevaluate and innovate. I broke that door. Now I'm speaking at the podium, ain't broke no more. Camel soup is full of sodium, I spoke that all. Just to manifest my destiny, your knowledge is power. I'm about to kill him with the weaponry. That song, yeah. I've been praying, slain, saying we take it. I'm a saddle killer. All right. We don't have Joe here, so I gotta I gotta do Joe's part right now. So we got one on. What's up, Hannah? What happened? Uh, we got bit. Yeah, we got bit. So we least we've been uh, doing work on the boat the last last few days. So it's time to just get out and do some fishing, charters or not. So jumped in, just me and Hannah. I better jump back up in the bridge, but nice work. Let's get it done. <laughs> You're doing it wrong, Hannah. <laughs> Now when no negativity in my vicinity, they draining all the energy and really ain't a friend of me and really ain't a kid of me. Listen, I'm about to tell them. I kind of want to talk a bit about dredge fishing, right? especially like pulling dredges at eight knots like we do here. Um, and I think it'd be kind of cool to go over it a little bit. Uh, it's definitely a little different when you're actually pulling them at a faster speed and pulling lures. Um, and like what we're also doing here in Kona where we're trying to fish not just numbers, but we're trying to catch big fish too. So obviously people are still on the fence about it. Wet 
whether it plays a factor into into bigger fish is you know to be determined um gotta have a pulley system gotta have electric reels they pull really hard i don't think it's a good idea to pull one flat off a cleat it just takes too time too long to clear it you get a real big one on and people start losing their mind i like to keep my stuff right up here in the bridge so i can do it myself um and that way i can clear it while my crew is downstairs uh clearing lines they don't have to worry about it so i clear all my stuff and then i just hang it from my riggers catch the fish and it's hanging from the rigger so I can just put it right back out when I want. I don't need someone to help me put it back out so we can get right back on it. That's how I like to do it. Um, I've learned a lot of my dredge stuff from the guys that, my buddies in Costa Rica and places and like guys that go and fish in the DR and you know St. Thomas and a lot of places where you're getting a lot of number fish. What I do is run a uh, bigger, more aggressive sort of bait right behind my dredge, like the next wave. I don't want it right on top of it. I don't know if they're so comfortable coming, swimming right up into the thing and then eating a bait right over top of it. So I want a little bit behind it and then staggering them back behind that. And it seems to work pretty good for me. That's sort of my, my spread and the pattern that I like to do around with. But uh, we'll catch up with a couple other people and, and, and hear about some other ways and uh, hopefully get some cool info about it on So we're going to talk a little more here about dredges and what I wanted to do was bring in a friend of mine who has a lot of knowledge in dredges. He's uh, started up a company called Firetails and he's basically specifically making baits to run in dredges and he, he makes these baits then he puts a dredge cam in, he watches them, he's really on it. So he's a great person to talk to and get some insight on pulling dredges. So anyways, uh, he's now, he's all the way over in Florida. I'm here at my house here in Kona. So we're gonna use a little technology here. We're gonna kind of do a back and forth here on an interview that I have with him. And uh, thanks again, Mike, for, for doing this, for taking the time, you know, passing on this knowledge for free. Um, and I hope you guys back home and whoever's watching this sits down and enjoys it. Maybe you know all the stuff we're talking about, maybe not. Maybe you'll pick up one little tidbit of uh, information and. Uh, Heck, it's, it's free knowledge, so it's cool. I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I keep saying these videos are for you guys. Anyways, um, let's shoot over to Mike here. Uh, and the first question I wanted to ask him about was um, mass versus movement. Movement is more key, in my opinion. So I like to have a dredge that's got some movement to it, got some wiggle, got some vibration. I think these fish are hunting off vibration. But it'd be really cool to hear what Mike has to say about this. Mike, tell us a bit about uh, mass uh, versus vibration, uh, that type of stuff, and, and what your thoughts are on that. Um, a lot of captains say they're okay with pulling an artificial dredge. Uh, they're only trying to achieve uh, an image of mass on their dredge. They're not concerned with movement. Um, I personally feel that's a bit of a cop-out. I feel it's a way that they're justifying pulling that artificial dredge. Uh, just because you're pulling an artificial dredge doesn't mean it has to lack movement. Um, if you have movement, you also have mass. So why have just mass when you can have movement and mass? I feel that when you're introducing your baits under the surface of the water on a dredge, fish are more keen and able to detect uh, what's real versus fake underwater. Uh, when you bring something to the surface, you're mixing it with air, you're creating smoke and bubble trail, and yes, they're going to bite it. Uh, however, if you're going down underwater, I feel like you need to step up your game. You want movement on that dredge. You want your dredge to wiggle and get their attention and hold their attention. Um, so there's no reason to settle for just mass on a dredge. You can have both. Uh, and in my opinion, that's you want movement on your dredge. Thank you for that one. Um, moving forward, I guess the next question would be, um, so in Kona, we're, we're not really numbers fishing so much. Uh, we're looking for a big fish. We're looking for the one, right? So in terms of fishing for, you know, the one big fish, is there anything you would suggest in changing the dredge? Interesting to hear your, your thoughts on that, being that you spent a large part of, and you continue to spend a large part of your fishing career in those areas where there's a lots of, uh, big congregations, small fish. So. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Um, dredges 
for big marlin as opposed to small masses of marlin? Uh, my answer to that would be not really. Uh, we offer a couple different size dredge baits. Um, but as far as a dredge is concerned, when you got 24 or 36 baits on there, you're making quite a large footprint, regardless of the size of the individual baits. Now, typically, uh, bigger fish will eat bigger prey. Um, so it is important to match the hatch, so to speak, and try to emulate what those fish are naturally feeding on. Uh, however, when you are pulling a dredge with a lot of stuff on it, um, whether your bait is 10 inches or 14 inches probably isn't going to matter too much. Uh, I would just be more concerned with matching the, the natural bait fish which are in that area. All right, so there's that. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Uh, as you heard, really, when it comes to bigger fish or smaller fish, probably not changing up the dredge as much as what you're changing it compared to what they're eating. So trying to get your dredge to kind of match the hatch of what they're feeding on. Good good theory to, to base off of. Cool, all right, on to the next question. Uh, Mike, eh, I guess the best thing I, I think a lot of people wonder sometimes too, especially lure fishing. What would you suggest, in your opinion, would be the best place to like to place your, your baits, I mean your lure, uh, in relation to where your dredge is uh, in your spread? And I'm talking trolling eight knots, right? Uh, we're not pitching baits to them or something. So, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? How do you position a spread around the dredge at trolling eight knots? Uh, positioning, positioning your lures behind your boat while dredge fishing um, can present some challenges. Uh, lure fishing, typically, we're going a bit faster. Um, therefore, a little more whitewash behind a boat makes it a little more challenging to keep your dredges in clean water. Um, with that being said, you want to try to find that clean water as best you can. Typically we're fishing our dredges 50 to 75 feet behind the boat, uh, as far outboard as possible in those clean lanes of water. Um, and as far as positioning your lures, you know, give it some distance behind the dredge, but keep it simple. Once again, if you want that fish to bite that lure, don't confuse it by putting multiple lures or teasers in that same area. Uh, isolate your intended target and they will find it and they will eat it. And uh, you know, stick with that and play around and find your happy place for your dredges and your lures and uh, there's no rules set in stone but uh, go ahead and have fun with it and see what bites. All right, nicely said Mike. Yeah, that's uh, totally agree with everything you just said there. The comment that the phrase that sticks out in my mind when he was talking was the uh, isolate the isolate the, the bait you wanted to eat, right? So isolate the target. So I, I think that's just a great thing to think on simply stated. Keep, keep it simple and, and isolate what you want that marlin to eat when it comes up on the dredge. On to the next question. So uh, I've heard all kinds of different theories on this and, and uh, I too have been in a position where it's happened and I kind of been questioning what exactly do I want to do in this position. So you're out there and all of a sudden one comes up on your dredge. A nice fish comes up, swirls on it, right? Or you see them, right? If I've had it happen, my, someone's yelled, oh, on the dredge, right? Or you look down, you see him lit up, you see the pecs lit up, <clears throat> and he's up in the, you know, checking out the dredge. Um, what do you do? You rip it away from him? Do you leave it there? Do you pop the lure out of the clip behind it and bring it out? What, uh, what do you do? Interesting to hear what you have to say, Mike. Okay, so the situation arises where you have a fish on your dredge. Uh, what is the next course of action? Uh, what do you do? Um, first thing is don't panic. Uh, don't rip the dredge away from the fish at full speed. Um, a lot of dredges nowadays are variable speed. Um, I would treat it just like any other teaser and see what the fish does, see how it's acting, and try to tease the fish in and keep it interested. Uh, position a pitch bait back there so when the fish does peel off the dredge uh, there is an isolated bait right there for it to eat. Um, if you stay calm and treat it like any other teaser and you know keep track of the fish's behavior and what they're doing um, you know you should get a bite out of that fish. All right cool thanks Mike. So yeah there you have it. Um, 
makes a lot of sense. Treat, you know, treat the dredge like it's a teaser, which it is. Uh, the next question that I wanted uh, to see if you could answer for us was, um, and I'm strictly talking lure fishing. I know bait fishing is different because you're going to be switching baits. You need to see every every single fish that comes up on it. But in terms of lure fishing, eight knots. What are your thoughts on uh, dredge visibility? So a lot of guys pulling dredges at eight knots cannot see their dredge. If you're pulling lures, this is still a big problem since you're not exactly pitching baits. Uh, yeah, not really. Um, especially if you're pulling an artificial dredge and you're not feeding the fish. By feeding the fish, I'm referring to pulling natural baits on the dredge and the fish being able to eat the bait off the dredge and get a free meal. Um, typically with an artificial dredge, you're going to raise the fish, they're going to show interest, uh, but eventually they're going to fade back and eat another offering somewhere behind the dredge. Um, so with that being said, even if you can't see your dredge, it's still working, it's still doing its thing, uh, they're going to see it and hopefully they're going to eat something else that day. Alright, cool. Um, the next thing that, um, kind of a thing that's debated here in, in Kona probably. In terms of, of you know, it, it, the, the older mentality, the newer mentality, I hear a lot of the older guys say, oh, I don't want to pull a dredge. You know, and, and I'm talking also more in the terms of uh, lure fishing for bigger fish too. Uh, I hear a lot of things like, okay, I don't want to pull a dredge because it's going to confuse the fish, right? He's going to come up and he's going to see this, he can see the boat, well, you don't, in their minds, they say, you don't need a dredge, I'll, you know, you got a boat, that's your biggest teaser, which I agree, that is the biggest teaser. Um, you don't need the dredge because all that's going to happen is it's going to confuse the fish. The fish is already there. Um, so the, 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 the older mindset that I do hear a lot is that the dredge is kind of counterproductive in that way. That it's going to hurt your shots or you're not going to get as aggressive bites or you're going to confuse the fish. Too much to offer. So I do hear that and I'd like to hear your opinion on that. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. So there is a lot of resistance. Um, especially among guys who've been around a long time, fishing a long time. Uh, certainly can get it done without dredges, certainly have got it done without dredges, caught plenty of fish. Um, so they're saying we don't need a dredge. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you don't need a dredge. Uh, however, it is not going to hurt you. Um, typically, most guys are using electric reels, uh, easy retrieval. If you're not, it just needs to be a coordinated effort. Uh, if you hook up, the boat slows down, someone's cranking that dredge in. Um, you know, should be able to clear it fast enough in order to get after your hooked fish. Um, you know, the other thing is that these guys are saying it might confuse the fish. Um, I feel like you're going to be causing more confusion once again with stuff further back in the spread. Uh, stuff that's short up close to the back of the boat like a dredge is the first thing typically that they're going to see and uh, I feel like it's only going to fire up and entice the fish more to attack uh, an isolated prey behind the dredge. So no, I don't feel like it confuses fish more. I feel like uh, that would be more so an issue with more stuff further back behind the boat in cleaner water more often. So keep it simple, uh, dredge is not gonna hurt anything. Uh, cool on that. I guess, uh, you know, just closing up here, Mike, um, I'd be interested to hear, you know, any just last little thing, any tips, advice, something that you think would help a lot of people here. Um, yeah, give it, give us, give us one one piece of advice that you think would really kind of help a lot of people. All right, guys. Finally, uh, one last thing about dredge fishing. Uh, naturally, obviously, it's an expensive undertaking, uh, a lot of effort. Um, just make sure that all your connections are made properly. Uh, chafe gear, uh, the use of cable when and where possible. Um, go heavy. You know, make sure you've got the right crimps and chafe gear. And, uh, you know, other than that, you should be fine. And enjoy it. Have fun with dredge fishing and catch them up. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, there's our little conversation with Mike, uh, owner of Firetails. Appreciate you sitting in here with us. Got a few more episodes coming at you before we kind of wrap it up until we start up again next season. And uh, appreciate the support this year.